Here we are, back again. Probably five minutes after I finished the drawing, I was not planning on painting today, but I just kind of thought, what the heck, why not? So, I am going to first put in um, a hint of the floor. I'm going to go pretty warm. This is going to be our normal. Remember, I only have three colors. Or three colors, uh, I'll take it back four. Uh, I have yellow. I have cadmium, yellow, medium. Cadmium, medium, red, medium. Uh, the one I use, I think, is a naphthol, red, medium. <clears throat> ultramarine, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, white, and black. I don't hardly ever use black. I don't know why I'm, I just put it in my palette. Normally, if I'm doing an eyeball, that's the pupil or I mean there's very few times uh, but there are most things uh, you know I think again in temperatures ultramarine blue very cool burnt sienna very warm opposites on the color wheel that's why when you mix them together they turn black pretty much black and it's easy for me to touch a little more red if I need it, uh, a little more uh, burnt sienna if I need it to go warmer. If it's too warm, I touch blue. So those two, I, I, they bounce back and forth, but they're the two by far uh, the two most used uh, colors in my palette. So that underpainting, and again, I'm not really, I say underpainting, the wash underneath, I don't normally do that. But for this painting, that's probably really going to help us. And I'm okay, because this is just a thin wash, and it can be thin because of this tone we put down. And I can actually almost go over old bells. I mean, all we're really wanting to do is mimic uh, grain of the floor, if you will, right? See, I picked up that uh, pencil mark, which is fine. I'm, all I'm trying to do, really, is get the, get the direction. Now, as it comes forward, because this was done with a flash, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but because it was, it's, it's yellowing warming. I would say it's kind of warming as it comes forward. Just putting little differences, little interests, if you will. I think I'm going to make that, I'm going to choose to make this a little darker. We'll see how that goes. I want to make this darker against her light, if you will. So, we'll see how that reads. It's all about the way it <clears throat> let's see here this is going to be a little tough because I've got that little lip which is good to have that lip's nice to have for my paintings but for this I may even have to take it off of there and this is not the only you know as uh Robert Hagen, one of my favorite artists, uh, Australian artists. This is not the only whack we get at this, is what he would always say. You know, don't think if I don't get this right, and you know, I, I want to make this brighter. But if this is this painting is not about the floor. And I don't want to make it about the floor. So that's one thing as an artist, and then I've gotten better about it. Uh, and it's just for each their own. You know, some people are all about all of the detail, every single little thing, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the kind of artist you are and that's the kind of art you want to create, then that's good. You should do that. Uh, for me, I don't want... This is a painting about uh, Bella. And if the floor, I want it to obviously, she's obviously on a floor, and I want it to be a wood floor. 
but that's it. Uh, I will uh, use that to, to, to create a little bit of interest, some little painterly strokes and loose and grains and little highlights. And I mean, I'll, I'll make it look okay, but I'm not going to put a lot of effort into it. And that's not me being lazy. That's uh, my choice. As you'll see throughout, I'm so sorry I keep hitting this. I know you're sick of me saying I'm sorry, but I really am. So as it comes forward, it obviously gets lighter. And again, one of these paintings, I'm going to take my, I'm probably just going to, I'm going to move my camera. I hate to move it because it took me a while. You'd think it would be pretty easy <clears throat> for me to uh, turn the camera straight down and point it at my my easel, my palette. I guess you're pointing at my easel now. But it, it took me a while to get it there. Lots of pulling and prodding and stuff. So, uh, But for you guys, I'll do it. I do want to, uh, and could I, could I do this, I guess, right? <laughs> I could go like this and then show you how I'm touching the yellow, I'm touching the white. That's really what I'm doing. And I, I started with this and that, added white, and as I came forward, it becomes more yellow, it gets a little brighter. So I just keep, just keep doing that. Now, I don't have to get it perfect. Uh, I really don't want to do a lot of this because as you guys know, it starts drying and there's areas that start drying and areas that are still a little wet and I'm getting into that danger point. So I need to stop, I need to stop and I'll paint over that. I want to, I want to, Kill the edge though. I don't want there to be an edge between this, between this light and as it goes up. All right, good enough. So that was the big brush. Let's just go ahead and um, whack in some of the uh, detail here. The, I hate to say detail. Uh, the, the different areas. How about that? So I'm looking for the right size brush. I normally always, for these, for this size painting, an eight by 10, a number six is like perfect. So most of what you saw when I painted the last painting, and you saw almost all of it, was that number six. This one, this is a number four. No, that's a number two. Where's my number four? Surely I got a number four. There's so many daggum brushes. I'm not seeing them. Hmm. Interesting. It's another number two. Huh. Same exact brush, number two. I, I don't have a number four. Oh my. So, I guess I'll just have to quit painting. That's, that's just amazing. And this is a little small. How have I painted all these years? And I would never know this <laughs> if I wasn't trying to let you guys know what brushes I'm picking up. Here we go. Here's a number four. It's a different brand. This is a, um, I don't think I ever... I don't remember if I ever told you what these were. I love these brushes. These are my favorite brushes. Uh, you get them at Michael's. They're three dollars and ninety nine cents a piece. Even, even for these big ones, they're three ninety nine. <clears throat> they are Royal and Langnickel Essentials. I think it's actually like the mid value brush of that brand or model or whatever. I love these brushes. They are perfect for acrylics. They are softer. Most oil artists use 
um, um, well, natural hair bristle brush, right? They use a, they use a big, these, this is hog hair. That's what most are, because it's real, it's, it's stiffer. And oil is this thicker, stiffer paint. This is the perfect one for me and the, the amount of work uh, or water and pressure, everything I do in uh, acrylic. I love these brushes. I don't have a four, so I'm going to use a brush that I did use before I found those, and that's an American Painter, the 4250KF, which is their filbert. This is the one I used to use. Great brush. It'll work fine. It's a little stiffer. But I need the size of it. I need the size. Now, normally I would never paint that small, uh, but there's areas of this white that I I, I want to I don't want to get wrong. So I'm going to choose right now. Hmm. I'm going to put in. I, gosh, I normally never do this. I think I'm going to go pure white. Pure white. It'll show through some places as it gets thinner. Uh, I, I would normally never do it. I would save the white um, just for little areas because it's not pure white. There's some spots that are pretty daggone white. But I will, um, I'll, I'll mix those later. You see right there, it's getting a little thinner. Well, I guess you can see. So let's make a decision, even if we're wrong. Let's say that's it's a little thick. I'll paint back into that or a little yeah, thick. Yes, the paint's not thick. It's that area is wide. Wide is what I was looking for. Um, I'm trying to follow that line there. And I may have to go over this several times to get it as bright. And I may never get it that bright because that's... You know, it's a flash. There's light coming back through that monitor that makes it even brighter. This is reflected. Right? This is ad additive. Additive. This is uh, light projecting from behind. This is light bouncing off. There's no way I'm going to get this that bright. But when a light shines on it, it'll be aight. Maybe I'll think I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't guess I don't. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. As we paint back and forth, we'll find these shapes. And that distance looks pretty decent. Awesome. That's what we should tell ourselves. It's kind of like CrossFit. It's not, not hard. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm using, like, I, I need to add a little water. When I add water... I really can't show you. I'll show you next time when I'm uh, showing the palette. I, I, I've got a bucket over here that I've got my water in. I put this on the edge of the rim, and I mean, I just touch the bristles, and these will, kind of like a fountain pen, will pull water up into them. So really just a little touch of water. I'm not dipping this down, you know, past the ferrule in that water and like I said this this is a you know how we layer I'm gonna be going over this with thick paint thick paint to make that pop make it stand out but for now we've got acrylics and this is just how we have to roll with them but I like them I like them make an attempt to get the shape right while I'm putting that down. That looks like a paw. Let me put that. That's not very good. A little more water. You can probably hear that hitting the side of that thing. It's almost, wow, look how sprawled out that is. See when, you know, see the end of that? And now when I come back down here, I've sharpened it. I just laid it on its side and tried to sharpen it so I could get in there a little bit. You see now why I'm not using that number six. It's hard enough to use this little number. This dude right here. 
didn't realize I didn't. That's this teaching stuff is, is interesting to me. I did not know that I never. I really never use a four. I go from tens, eights, and sixes straight to twos. I guess. <clears throat> I should have tunes on at least some tunes light in the background that you all you know can hear but um, it's not too loud this is just your wind chimes do y'all hear those wind chimes drop me nuts let's see here that's that's really sharp right sharp um, hard for me to get <laughs> with a filbert uh, this is where you would be better off to have a flat but we'll, we'll make it sharp later. <laughs> decent, 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 awesome, no, decent, yes. Yeah, that warm, this warm uh, wash back here is really showing through on that white. We're going to really have to, because I'm putting all this on thick. But like to get that highlight on top of Bella's nose, we're gonna have to lay that on. So there's th this shape is, and I don't have it right. This sh little line that's critical, critical, and I've got it too humped, which I'll just have to fix that later. But this abrupt little shape here on a boxer is just so important. It almost scoops down. It almost does that. And we can definitely fix that with the paint we're putting on both sides of it. So this is pink. Pink. We're going to shape that right there. She's such a beautiful boxer. A beautiful dog. She's just gotten old like her daddy. Old and busted up. So I'm stepping back. Shaping up, it looks okay. Looks okay. This shape, key. Key. <clears throat> and I apologize if my hand's messing up the focus, but this little jowl thingy that comes down, thingy, jowl skin, um, important. You would probably at first want to switch to a smaller brush. I do like the challenge of just using the tip and stuff. And at this point, if we get it wrong, it's not a big deal. It really isn't a big deal. We can always fix it. Um, and I'm not going to get it every bit of white covered, but I just wanted to um, start there. I'm telling you, I've really underestimated how long this painting stuff takes me. I'm already 18 minutes into this. <clears throat> 15 to, I think it was like 15 or something to sketch it. Um, I just didn't think it took me this day long. All right. So, these colors. And again, we normally have been looking at a piece of paper, which would in the... A, printout of this picture is will look more like this is going to look because again it's this light coming through here but that's okay it pushes us this brindling is going to be so complicated for me to get because the but it's going to be interesting if i pull it off that's why it's so beautiful there's some really warm areas and there's some little darker parts but then there's cooler parts and as an artist that is so important to understand as the light hits where the white's hitting it's really warm and where it turns away it's it's cooler it's I'm not saying it's blue or purple or anything it's more yellowy right which yellow is really <clears throat> some would say warmer than red orange is the warmest but it's definite to me that's lighter it's, there's some reflected light going on that's warm. That's cool. That's what's going to turn this. Little areas where it goes lighter, I say cooler, 
warm, dark, warm, light, warm. You see that? <clears throat> you're saying, Joan, you're crazy. And I think you're probably right. I guess I'll just switch the stick to this brush. So I don't want to overthink this too much because I, I can do that as I'm describing it. I would never sit back and, you know, think through this and articulate <laughs> this much. I just kind of blindly pick up and try to match a color and put her down. Um, so I need to do that and shut up. This right here, this, now again, I'm just trying to block in, but that really is going to take a little bit smaller brush right there. But I'm going to be doing a few whacks at that because that gets really dark in there, right? Much, much more blue in that than what I've put. Than what I've put. And I hope as you see, and again, I'm looking there. I'm glancing here and I'm going, and every time I pause, I'm studying this. Absolute critical. So I'm just really putting this where I see that shade, that shade of warm. I'm going to keep saying that warm, not, not burnt sienna and blue or whatever we're talking about. Let's see how this outside edge is the color I've got on my brush. The color value, pretty close. This is that other color. Critical. So now I'm going to try to make an attempt at shaping that arm. May have gotten it a little big, but put some muscles on Bella. She, she likes that. Some muscles. All right, this right here. A little water. Anytime you hear this, that's me putting my brush on the side of that thing. Getting some water. So the brush is pretty ragged, and that's from years of me scumbling with it, which is really, you know, you should probably reserve for one of the big bristle brushes. Very warm right there. Very warm. This right here is darker, definitely darker than what I've got on there. I say darker. It's it's uh, cooler. Uh, I, I, there's some in my mind as a color mixer. There's more blue in in the same paint that I've got on my brush. There. Now now I've been doing a lot of this. Really, I should be doing more of this way back but some of this stuff is pretty tight I, I can't you know it's not like I'm painting that big golden horse um, that was so big I could stand in the bathroom probably paint it um, I'm going to lighten it a smidge so I'm gonna take the burnt sienna and take some white See how this does. Pretty close. Uh, warm it a little. I mean, a smidge with red. I don't really want this to end up. I'm not happy with that color. And that's one thing that takes tons of tons of practice. You probably notice it. It's usually I'm pretty lucky. Um, I say lucky, uh, I've done this long enough <clears throat> that it doesn't take me much to hit the color I'm looking for, the value. You know, I come down, hit it maybe a couple times. Um, that takes a lot of practice, and I don't want to at all make it sound like that's easy because it, it, it is not. And you can imagine how long these paintings took me, or they would take me now, and they'll take you when you have to mix that color. 
and that value and that saturation, right? So there's, I hate the word color. That's why most artists will say hue, which basically means color. But what you're after, um, Everett Raymond Kinsler, uh, world-renowned portrait artist, um, died last year, two, a couple years ago. Had the good fortune of talking to him once, which was cool. And he talks about color values when he teaches. And he talks about don't say color, don't say value, say color value. And what he means by that is don't go, well, what color's the sky? Well, it's blue. Well, no kidding, it's, you know, it might be blue, but what color of blue, what value of, is it light blue, is it dark blue, is it a cool blue, is it a warm blue? Is it saturated, is it too blue, is it dulled, is it a grayer sky like outside today? That's kind of, it's not kind of, it's really what you're after. And to, even to guess what color is that? If I had to give that a name, it's pretty hard. And that's why as an artist, I don't mean to say I cheat, but you basically go, well, I, it's it's lighter than this value-wise, and it's cooler. That's in my mind. So if I do get this the right value, and I get it cooler than this, it doesn't really matter whether it's greenish or purplish or bluish or whatever color hue it really is if i if i nail that value and it's cooler than that you don't want it cold i don't want the blue on there and you know so i'm going lighter i'm sorry i'm going warmer here than what's there but i'll when i brindle that that'll uh That'll change. And when it dries, it'll make it a little bit different anyway. I'm pushing it a little bit too much right now. I mean, and I, I look and I see warm and I put warm down. It's easy to do. I'm going to put... I'm going to put a greenish... Greenish hue. I'm talking, not color. Sounds dumb. A, it's got a greenish hint to it. Let me see if I can do that. Let me see. I possibly do it. Probably not. E. E. That's close. You see, does that is that is that read right? Um, that's close right now. Now, of course, it'll dry and we'll lose it, and I'll have to repaint it again. But while I've got that. That where I see it and put it down swift. If you go back and watch, and I guess I didn't, um, let me think. I didn't videotape, no, I didn't videotape. The one I did of uh, Roscoe, the dog. If you go back and look at those pictures, there's actually, if you went to my website, it's probably a better example. There's a dog. And this gets lighter. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. I'm just trying to cover the canvas. Uh, there was a dog that I painted for Preston at the gym. That it's a friend of his, hunting dog, pup, beautiful dog. And he, um, to paint, if you go look at that painting and look at, at the head, or the paws or anywhere else. What I did was I I got an area. It's almost like I, in his eye patch. I'm just doing it from memory. The shape was like that. And I left it. And then I came in and got some, you know, dark and then I painted a shadow in there, and then I put the eye, and it, it, I tried my best to paint in the very fewest brush strokes that I can. And that's what I try to do on any of them. Um, if you look at the last painting, 
<clears throat> even though it took me twice as <laughs> twice as long by the clock that I thought it would have, it's it's putting it down. It's seeing it's committing, and it takes practice. You know, you got to be brave for some of this stuff. Um, you know, even though I've got this wrong, right? Even though I got these colors wrong, they're, they're, I'm making an attempt. It's already reading like a dog, right? It's already forms turning. Um, I'm not, I, I never, because I'm not good enough, I never try, like I was saying in one of the other videos, like Howard uh, Sandin preached in his book that I didn't like or that didn't make sense to me, still doesn't, <clears throat> that you can't put a, I can't put this brush stroke down unless I've got it mixed absolutely perfect and I know exactly where I'm going to put it and the way I'm going to put it down. That just sounds so bad. That sounds painful. It doesn't sound like it's fun. Uh, I, I like, I like just painting and, and not stressing and I'll fix it. I'll screw it up and I'll fix it. But you see now, this is already darker than when I put it down. There's a sheen to that that I'll have to get in layers. Right? I'm going to have to get it in layers. And that's that. Fun, fun stuff. But there's little reflections on her, um, on her skin. my bucket let's uh, go ahead and the color doesn't matter right here necessarily it will eventually but I'm just wanting to get I guess it does matter now that I look at it Daggone it I'm going to just want to get her painted over that's really transparent that's weird <laughs> this is not the right color, I don't think. It's not the right color. Color value. I know y'all are probably going, that guy's crazy. He's talking all artsy and stuff. Oh, let's see, this is bright. Probably what I'll need eventually, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. She's your good boy. She's your good girl. Um, I mean, ways using the same brush. I don't know. Well, of course, I've only got one of these number fours. So I got an excuse this time. Uh, Normally, I, it's just insane that I've gotten into such a habit of having a light color mixed in that brush, and then I need to go to a a dark. And instead of picking up a new brush, I go and I wash all that light out because I'm gonna have to come right back to it. It's just dumb, dumb. So what I did here guess anybody guess what I did just then exactly I took some blue and added it to the burnt sienna very good very good now that's a little hmm, it's a little dark to put anywhere except right there anywhere but right there in the beige face she the beige face Starting to look like a dog already. That's good. A little dark there. Here. There. Right. And the shape of this ear is important. Right. And then it comes down. Right. Yeah. Little dark spot right there. I'll get that eye in there and then it'll start whooping like the bills. What the heck was that? 
I don't know. I don't know. This is not that dark. I'm wanting to do that, but again, that's what we do when we don't look at this. We look up here and go, oh, that's dark. No, it's not. This is a little bit, and I'm just going to drag it, because it's not as dark as that. There's a little hot little dark spot right there. A little bit here. I'm just using the tip of that brush, letting that paint come out. This is a little darker. Notice I just went, that's all it needed. Now I'm going to be right here, because that little edge there. Oh, look at that. Beautimous. It's beautimous. Uh, underneath her jaw, when I, when I commit to the, yeah, <laughs> the floor, uh, I'll put that shadow in. She's got a little shadow right there. Heck gone, dogs. Is, it, is that telling me it's time to take a break? It probably daggone is. I hear people. But we're not going to quit just yet. We're going to, we're going to put that eye in because I want to. Because I want to. And then, then. Now I'm, I don't have black right now. That black, the little spot of black was dried up. So we're going to go with this dark I've got. And we'll see how that goes. That's pretty dead on dark. She's pretty dark right there in the village. The nose is not... Gosh, even over here, it's almost as dark, isn't it? Golly. This is a little darker. I don't put it down too dark, but... The nose is not quite as dark. Right? Right? Y'all see, you don't have to, nothing wrong with tracing, I guess. You can tell I don't like it, but you don't have to. You need to practice. I mean, it, you know, there are artists that I think are, you know, Norman Rockwell, he painted for years and didn't trace, but then he was hired by the Saturday Evening Post and he had to turn that stuff around so quick. He's just like, I ain't got time to do that no more. Um, and there are artists that do big paintings that draw or sketch this and then project it up on the wall. And that's different. That's different. I ain't trying to judge, but this shows you, is, is it perfect? No. I'm sure it, if we took a piece, this is a little high as I'm looking at it, I'll have to fix this as her home. But... I can look at it with pride and go, that was me doing it by my hand. Which means something to me. I'm never going to let up on it. Never. Never. I don't know why either. Chase talking? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Chase is talking? Yeah. Kira's talking? Are you kidding me? Gosh, I hope they don't watch this. Crazy people. All right, I guess it's a good time to stop. Craziness has started.